Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how are you doing today, man? What up, Nathan? I'm fantastic. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic, and it's a beautiful day. It's a great conversation we're about to have, and I'm just happy to be on the call with you. Likewise, brother man. Likewise, I always dig our time together. Nice. So I'm going to do a little bit of pre-show banter before we jump into it today. Do it. I, have, I have found that one of the things that holds people back the most, a couple of things actually. Number one, fear of being rejected. Number two, things that were kind of brought up, don't talk about money, don't talk about strangers. And that makes it really hard to approach strangers and ask them for money. And... um not knowing what to say, not knowing exactly what steps to take, which leads to people not taking steps at all. And so I find this, that even the most skilled people at what they do, because they have these hangups, they're not able to bless the world with what it is that they're able to do. And I wanted to get your thoughts on, I know that's a bunch to just lay out at once, but I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Well, it's even worse than that for really somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 plus years, people who are really good at the thing selling have been teaching psychological mind fuckery. And a lot of people who are good people and really good at the thing that they do are terrified to use tactics and strategies and methods that they feel aren't right. Mm -hmm. And because there's this stigma in the client acquisition world of, well, really the only way to make it work is to be a sales douchebag and they don't want to do that. And they've almost all of them have been on both sides of a really weird, icky, gross, awkward sales transaction. They're like paralyzed. And it's interesting to me because my whole take on this is It's not ABC always be closing. It's ABC always be connecting. And here's, I've said this before on the show, what we're going to get in today and even next week's episode is even a little bit more intense as it applies to this. Here's the bottom line. Not everybody is like the right person to be a mathematician. Not everybody is the right person to be a baby brain surgeon not everybody's right to be a business owner and not everybody's right to be the person who goes and does the sales thing. However, with that said, there's a really easy, easy way to get clients that doesn't feel awkward, that doesn't require bullshit tactics, that doesn't make you feel like a jerk after the fact. And you don't have to succumb to the rejection and all of the headache and nonsense that what most people think getting clients or doing sales entails. And it just blows my mind that even with such an easy process, there are some people that are just like, oh my God, connect to eight people in a day? Like, I can't do that. Well, you might be one of those people that can't do the getting clients thing, right? Or you need to re-go through the process of what I say, here's how to go get clients and realize that it's not scary. It doesn't suck. It's not hard. It won't make you feel gross. And that's kind of what we're going to get into today. Okay. So all of those things that I mentioned make getting clients kind of terrifying for some people. And the, the additional thing that you said the experience that they've had either being sold or the experience that they've had trying to take somebody's sales techniques and implement it into what it is that they're doing, it just kind of compounds the scariness of the, of the getting clients situation. So let's, let's kind of go through and pick apart the, the three or four main things that prevent, um, that prevent people from taking the action that they need to take. And let's start with 
not knowing what to say, because this, this is the problem that I have. I've read a lot of sales books. I've read books on the Sandler selling system. I've read uh, the, the guy Wolf of Wall Street. I read his book. I've read a lot of these NLP, neuro linguistic programming books and how they apply to sales. And there's a lot of conflicting information. And when I go into a, a situation, I'm like, do I do this? This guru teaches this, this guru teaches that. Does that work for my market? Does it not work for my market? I don't know what to say. So then I just don't say anything at all. Not me particularly, but a lot, of, and even me sometimes, but a lot of people out there, I hear this common complaint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not knowing what to say or how to start a conversation is generally the number one bottleneck people have when it comes to getting a client, right? I mean, here's the bottom line. I don't care how you do it. If you're going to get a client, you have to have a conversation. It can be a one-sided conversation where your half is all in pre-written text. That's the thing that you do, right? Copywriting, a sales page, an ad that drives traffic to that sales page, and then the conversion event. Awesome. Fantastic. But you got to know what you need to start the conversation with before you can have that stuff and it be effective you got to have a conversation and people get this in their head that, Oh, I've got something to sell. Like, Oh my God, it's so scary to have a conversation with somebody. It's because this specifically is because they're going into that conversation with the wrong agenda in mind. And it's simple. If you go into a conversation, you're starting a conversation with another human being with the intent of trying to sell them something you're already done unless you're an expert at being able to do that because it screws up the headpiece, right? If instead you just go into that conversation with my only agenda is to see if it makes sense for me to continue having a conversation with this person. Now all you're doing is starting a conversation with another human being with no thing to sell, right? All you're doing is starting a conversation with somebody to see if it makes sense to continue having a conversation with them. Oh my God, I don't know how to do that. Really? Okay, we, we teach this. It's called social currency. But back up a little bit. Before we even get to that point, the biggest reason that that doesn't work so often is because we're starting conversations with the wrong fucking people. We're going to really get into the leads piece next week because like, this is what it's all about. But if you've got somebody that is the right target market for the thing that you sell and you start a conversation with them and just be human. It's really not that hard. I think a lot of times too, the thing that people are trying to do is trying to figure out how to fit a square peg into their round hole. I'm not sure that came out correctly. Um, <laughs> but if that's the way you're approaching the conversation, if you're approaching the conversation with how do I get this person who might or might not be a good fit, how do I shove them into this round hole? I, I just can't get this. I can't get this right. Um, <laughs> when you approach it that way, it, it comes off a little bit creepy and it comes off a little bit awkward and it's just hard to do. There's, there's two main pieces to that. One of the people in, in our inner world sent me a screenshot earlier today. Um, another well-known quote unquote actor in the space of client acquisition did a post and it was something along the lines of, um, how to sell anything to anyone. And this person that sent me the screenshot, um, like crossed out anyone and changed it to the thing that we do, the right lead for you, right? Or something along those lines and sent it to me. And I'm like, yeah, that's the first piece, right? Somebody might need that round peg that you're selling, but they need a different version of that round peg, right? Or that square peg. Somebody might be, seemingly the right fit for the thing that you do, but they are never in a million years going to like you for some weird, stupid reason. And then there's the case of you, the person listening to this, thinking that somebody should be the right fit for the thing you do and trying hard and that sucks and it doesn't feel good for anybody. But then you take that and you add on top of the fact that it's, it's this whole process. You show up in somebody's inbox or their messenger or you call them on the phone or you walk into their office with this fucking thing that you think's amazing that they just got to have it. 
and you cram like, you know, nine different independent exchanges into a one paragraph statement. Here's the thing. Are you this? Cool. You got to have this because it fixes your world. No wonder that kind of sales doesn't work until you've done it nine million times. And by the time you're that good at it, you automatically pick the right kind of lead. You automatically start that conversation off in a way that works for you almost all the time. You know exactly where to go with that. And this is the thing. People are saying, hey, I want to be a black belt at this client getting thing. And I don't know how to like get into the ring. Uh, Okay. You want to be a NASCAR professional race car driver and go win all the races, but you don't know how to do 200 miles an hour in a car. It's like, that's what people are trying to do. And once they realize that that's the gap that they're facing, they go, Oh my God, I can't do this. There's an easy way to do this. And this is what it is that we teach. And it's for people that don't want to become an expert black belt at the psychological mind fuckery. That is professional sales. That's the long route. That's the route that I had to go down. The short route is, Get pretty clear on who's the right fit for your thing and start a conversation. How do you start a conversation? It's pretty simple. Hi, how are you? Right? Mm -hmm. Oh, your world's on fire. I might not want to talk to you anymore. Awesome. Hope that works out for you. Good luck. Take care. Pretty, (laughs) right? Yeah. So that does a little bit to alleviate. uh, you, You mentioned only go after the people that, are the right fit for you. That kind of alleviates a little bit of the fear of being rejected. But even so, one thing that I know is even when I was doing sales for other people, even if it's not my, even if it's not me personally being rejected when somebody says no, it's still a scary thing to put yourself out there. Why is it so, why is it so scary to be rejected. Why is it so scary to be rejected? Because we're afraid that what we think other people think about us might be true. Let me, let me re-say that. We're afraid that what we think other people might think about us might be true. If that's you and if that just hit you square in the, in the forehead, go back and listen to the episode on the show that we talked about. Here's permission to be your weird ass self because that's where this starts. It always comes back to this. Here's what sales is. Sales is manufactured relatability. You go identify somebody that needs and wants the thing that you sell and you manufacture relatability to establish no like and trust by building quote unquote a relationship but you do it in a manufactured way. That's what salespeople know how to do. Well, that's why it feels weird. That's why the rejection piece is in there because I don't know how to manufacture relatability. And that's why it comes off weird when you're having a conversation with somebody and there's not real relatability there and then it just gets worse from there. Here's how we fix that. Be your weird ass self. Start conversations with people that want and need the thing and put them through the filter of would I actually like this person in real life if I invited them over to Timmy's six-year-old barbecue birthday bash? (laughs) No? Cool. Stop talking to them. If you would totally dig that, continue the conversation and just be human. Well, I think you struck something too that's uh, a nerve that most of us don't want to admit to, and I'm going to admit to it right now. The fact that uh, if somebody says no, now I'm going to have to deal with the fact that maybe I'm not as cool or maybe what I'm selling is not as cool as I thought it was. And how do I get that confidence to go offer it to somebody else if the last person told me that they don't think it's worth it? That's a, that's a scary thing and that's a hard thing to do. Well, there's two things in there. One, your qualifying is wrong. We can fix that. And the second thing is, is you're asking the wrong questions because you're focusing on you and your thing and not them and what they need. Mm. Ah, oh my God. If you ask somebody questions, 
you never ask them the question, here, do you want this thing for $9 trillion? And they go, no. And you go, oh my God, my world doesn't work. No, you ask them questions to identify if what you have fixes what they need fixed, if it fixes it the way that they would like it fixed and on and on, and you actually qualify them. And by the time you get to that one last simple question of, hey, I think this makes sense. Do you want it? Nine times out of 10, they say yes, because you qualified the right way. What makes that hard to, to take a no is because you should be the one telling them no and not the other way around. And that doesn't work because people aren't qualifying the right way. We teach that. Yeah, you got to pay us to learn how to do that. Sorry, not sorry. The second piece is it doesn't feel good and you have a hard time going and talking to somebody else because you're fucking focusing on you and you need to be focusing on them. Simple. Okay. So that kind of covers the, it feels awkward and it not only feels awkward for you, the salesperson, it also feels awkward for the person you're trying to promote to. By the time you in your own head recognize that this feels awkward, they've been feeling it for minutes. Mm. Okay. So let's, let's kind of, wrap this up with the last thing that I mentioned at the beginning, which was because of all of these other things, because of my fear of rejection, because I'm not exactly sure how to initiate the conversation because in the past when I've initiated conversations, it felt awkward for me and I could tell it felt awkward for them. Now I'm just not going to take the proper steps I need to do because of all of these things. I'm just frozen. I feel like a deer in the headlight. What do I do? What, why do I feel like a deer in the headlight and how can I get over that? Well, you're, you're stuck and now you're going to procrastinate because the way that you've tried to do this doesn't work and you don't want to go do it the douchebag way. And so you feel completely stuck. It's procrastination, right? We find all this bullshit busy work to do and we're not actually doing stuff that generate income revenue generating activities, right? Revenue generating activities is going and starting a conversation with somebody that could need the thing that you do. Here's what you need to do. There's two things that, it, that are required to get clients, leads and a conversation, period, end of discussion. To make this easy, there's a simple process to get the right kind of leads for you that are super easy to start that super easy conversation and then ask them the right kinds of questions so you're in the position to tell them no. You're stuck because you don't have a process that actually works that you feel confident about utilizing. The only way to get unstuck and stop procrastinating is to have a process that actually is effective, period. Okay, so I'm going to say you've mentioned a couple of times the only way to get that process is to go through the trainings or to to pay for the up-level thing. I'm going to say, though, just through this free podcast, I had like two or three aha moments where you said something. I was like, oh yeah, that's a huge hurdle that I'm having to deal with. So if people are ready to take that next step, where can they go? Well, let me, let me first clarify something. When I say pay for it, you're going to pay for something that you want or need in either time and effort or money. Usually it's a little bit of both. You can get all of this and you can get your world quote unquote fixed for free by going and spending enough hours in our free Facebook group. It's all in there. I mean, 99% of it's in there. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash gorilla juice. Go get it. If you want the quick, fast way to get it, I would start with leads lab, 30 day leads lab.com. Nice. All right. Uh, you know what, actually, before we're out of here, tell us a little bit about Leads Lab because this is a brand new project and I'm really excited about it and I want the listeners to know what Leads Lab is. Yep. So for the last couple of years as we've been doing this, we have continually heard, quote unquote, I can close anybody if I can get a conversation with them. And most people listening to this will probably go, yeah. I'm good enough at the thing that I do. If I can get into a conversation with somebody that wants and needs it, they're almost always buying it. I just need to have more of those conversations. I think you're about 70 or 80% correct. You need a better process, a flow, not a script, but a flow to have that sales conversation to where it's actually effective and really doesn't feel icky. 
But the crux of this is everybody in our world has been banging on about, I just need more leads. I just need more leads. I just need more leads. And while I think that mentality is bullshit, you're looking at it wrong. I'm going to show you how to go get the right kind of leads for you in a very, very simple process. All of the stuff that we teach our people fundamentally works, but you got to have conversations with people. And we've constantly heard, I, I don't know how to start a conversation with somebody. Okay, fine. I will show you how to do it. And where is that website again? 30dayleadslab.com. And is that 30 spelled out or 30? 30. 30 leadslab.com. Awesome. Landon, another fantastic episode. Where can people go if they want to check out more episodes of the podcast? Ooh, salesgorillapodcast.com, bitches. Sweet. All right, man. Uh, it's been a blast. And until next time, I will catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Have a great day. Ha, ha, ha.